Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and today it's just an easy video. We are also going to be out in the greenhouse. So you will see that today. Um, we're going to be busy. I'm not doing a whole lot of cooking today, but I am going to make some beautiful smothered pork chops in the slow cooker. So it'll be ready for tonight's dinner. Anyway, I'm going to bring you along with me because this this is amazing. Just a few ingredients. You can use canned cream of mushroom or canned cream of chicken soup. But of course, I'm making my own homemade and I'm going to bring you along and show you that. We're going to put this together. The only thing that is not going to be homemade in here is, of course, the pork chops and the ranch um, seasoning packet. That's not homemade. And I don't have any in my pantry. So we're going to do semi homemade. Let's get busy. Okay, friends, so here we go. We're gonna turn this on. I'm still learning my stove. We're gonna need six tablespoons of butter. And that is for the roux we're gonna make. Now you can do this with homemade cream of mushroom soup too. I'm doing the cream of chicken, but you could do it with cream of mushroom. You just want to saute your mushrooms and um, with a little bit of salt and butter so that, it, you know, it sautes the, the liquid out of them. And then you wind up with a beautiful mushroom soup. So we're going to put that together. I'm going to use some of my fresh... Um, chicken broth on here and I do got to get milk out. Normally I would use cream of mushroom soup. I've got the mushrooms to make it but my husband won't touch it. So we all know that. All right we're gonna get this going in here. I've got my one cup measuring cup. I got six beautiful pork chops that we're gonna do this with. It's gonna be wonderful. We're gonna do all this in one pan. I'm gonna, once I get the gravy or the um, cream of chicken soup made up, then I'm just gonna mix the ranch right in this pan with it and then we'll dump it right over our pork chops. I don't need to dirty a whole bunch of dishes if I don't have to. And we're going to be out in the greenhouse, so this will be wonderful for dinner. You can serve this over rice, too, or mashed potatoes, which my husband loves mashed potatoes. So that's what we're going to do. I've got rice that's already made, you know, already made in the freezer, single serving. So I'm going to do mine over rice. And you'll see that when I serve it up. I do need to, while uh, that's cooking down a little bit, get some um, garlic powder and a little parsley. Okay, so we're going to do six tablespoons of flour in here. And then we're going to let that cook, cook the flour taste out because we don't want that flour taste in there. This is gonna, might wind up being a little bit darker of a roux, and that's all right, because I'm, one, two, I almost lost count. All right. We're going to stir this around so we can cook that flour out of there. See how it's getting a little bit darker, and that's all right, perfectly fine. We're gonna let that cook for a little bit right out of there, just bubble away. Can you see that? You can't see that? You can see it now. Okay, we're gonna let that cook away. Actually, I'll bring you up here. Okay, that's been a few minutes that's been cooking out of there. Now I'm gonna take and open up my chicken broth. 
You can't see me too well, but you can see what I'm doing, and that's what I want. We're going to add one cup of chicken broth to this. And one cup of milk. And we're also going to turn this down. We're going to do one cup of milk. Okay. Perfect. Now this is going to be thick because it's going to be just like the condensed mushroom or uh, cream of chicken soup. That's got to go down even lower. See how nice and thick that's getting? Beautiful. I'm going to put just a little bit of garlic powder in there. Maybe a, about a teaspoon. I'm also going to put some pepper in there. And I'm going to do a little bit of salt. You can do white pepper. I'm doing brown pepper or black pepper. I'm going to put some salt in there. That's why I like making this homemade, because you can control the sodium, the salt in it. You don't have to add any salt if you don't want. Okay, we're going to shut this off, because this is ready to go. That is beautiful. Okay, friends, I have got my packet right here. We're going to mix that in there. Wonderful. And you don't have to worry about this being thick or adding any extra liquid to it because those pork chops will make some beautiful broth in there. They'll give off quite a bit of juice. You know what we're going to do? We're going to give this a taste. We're going to give that a quick taste. Mmm. That is good. All right. So, I've got my pork chops. My pork chops are partially frozen still. And that's all right. I don't need to put any um, salt or pepper on my pork chops because there's a plenty in this gravy. So I'm just going to lay these in there. Yes, I'm using my Instapot, but I'm going to use the slow cook method. Okay, that's hot. So let me get my hot pad here. Wonderful. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to you'll be able to see this if I do it this way. Okay. Pour that right on top of your pork chops. It's that simple. I don't waste none of it if I can help it. Okay. Put that over there. I'm going to go ahead and set this. I'm going to put the lid on this. I don't need to, you don't need to add anything else to it. If you want onions or mushrooms in there or even potatoes in there, you can do that. I wouldn't add rice to it though because then you, you might not have enough juice to cook the rice. But you can add anything you want. Mine's just plain because we've already got mashed potatoes cooked and we've already got rice cooked. So, I need my glasses. So 
So we're going to put this on slow cook. And yes, five and a half hours is perfect. It probably won't take that long. It might because they're partially froze. But this is going to just go back here. And it's going to sit just like that. And it's going to be fine. And I didn't have to add parsley because there's parsley in the ranch dressing mix. So that's it, friends. That's how easy it is to whip something together for a busy day. Um, we're going to head out to the greenhouse. We'll see you out there. There was a change in plans. My husband got called away, so we're not going to be messing around in the greenhouse today. So I thought, you know what? We'll do a lunch lady pizza because this, you can freeze these pizzas unbaked or baked. Doesn't matter. I've already got one in the freezer because I made some this weekend for my grandbabies for their uh, summer party and they didn't eat it all. So that's fine. I sliced it up and I put it in the freezer and it froze beautifully. This one we're going to bake through so you can see it, how it looks when it's done. So we're going to get the dough going and we're going to get that set aside. I've already got sausage that's cooked up, but I do need to cook up five pounds of hamburger. So some of that burger is going to go on the pizza and the rest I'm just cooking ahead for other meals. So we'll get this going and then when this is resting and getting all happy in the bowl, we'll cook the burger. We're going to need two and two thirds cups of flour. So we got the flour done. Now to that, we're going to need three quarter cups of your powdered milk. Now you can use whole powdered milk too, or the non-fat dry milk. And that's what I got here. So we're going to do three quarters of a cup. And this is what makes that crust just beautiful. I don't know how many of you, of you remember the good old school pizzas. But when I was young and in school, they made them homemade and this is what they would make. I don't think they're homemade anymore, unfortunately, but they're still good. But this lunch lady pizza is top of the line. Okay, oh, I gotta get the sugar out. It calls for two tablespoons of sugar. My grandkids loved this stuff when I made it for them. My husband does too. And then of course they said to me, Nana, will you make some of those so we can freeze them at home and mama can make them for us? Absolutely. I make them anything. So I'm going to have to put together probably about six of them for her freezer and that'll be good. All right. So now we're going to do our yeast. And you can use like one package of rapid rise yeast. I don't have that. I buy all my yeast in bulk. So I'm going to do about two and a half teaspoons of yeast. I think a packet of yeast is, is either two and a quarter or two and a half teaspoons. I'm not positive. I know it's right within there. All right. Then we're going to do one teaspoon of salt. Okay, we're going to give that a little stir. Just to get everything mixed in there. Okay, let me set this aside. All right, so now it calls for two tablespoons of oil and one and three quarter or one and two thirds cup of warm water. So we're just going to mix it right in that water. Oil and water don't mix, but we're going to do what the recipe calls for. And we're going to dump that right on our dry ingredients. 
Okay. Beautiful. I'm going to set these all aside. Now, we're just going to mix this until it comes together. And it's going to be extremely sticky. It will not look like bread dough. It'll look more like a batter. But just mix it real good. And before you ask, I don't have my aprons on. They're in the laundry. You know, I trashed them this weekend cooking, so they're in my laundry. They're getting all washed up. Okay. And you probably wonder how in the world are you going to spread this batter, but you just take a spatula and spread it around. But we're not going to do that right yet. We are going to put a cap on this, and this is going to set aside. You only have to let it rest for about five minutes, but this is going to rest longer than that because we're going to get the burger cooked first. Okay, I got the big daddy pan out. My burger was fresh ground this morning from my butcher. Wonderful stuff, you'll see it. This burger is really lean. And I got, let's see, I got a little more than five pounds here. And of course he charges five, what is it? 549 a pound. But it's really lean. It's like 95, five, you know. I almost have to put a little oil in the pan when I fry it because it is so lean. That's what I'm going to do. I'll put just a little bit in there. Okay. We're going to fry all this up. I like having this ready for meals. Perfect. The other night I did goulash and I used the last of my cooked up burger. Can you see in my pan? Yes, you can. I don't know which is better. Okay. I'm going to turn this down. Now that I got it all broke up, I'm going to put some onions in here. I like having onions in it for other stuff, for other dishes. That way, you know, it's still not obligated to a certain dish, but the onions will give it a little extra flavor. It's nice when you're making goulash. The onions are already there. Well, with me, my tomatoes, my stewed tomatoes have onions and celery and garlic and all that good stuff in them. So I don't have to so much worry about this. But if you're going to make goulash, this is nice to have with little onions. And you can even do garlic in here. But you don't want to do too much because you really don't want it obligated to a certain dish. Most all your casseroles and anything that you're going to use it for calls for onions. So we're just going to let this cook. I turned this down. I might have turned it down too low. I'm still getting used to my stove. We're just going to let that cook up. I don't want it to cook real fast and burn. So we're just going to let that cook away real slow. Okay, it's cooking away, friends. I don't want to do anything with the pizza yet until I uh, have this burger cooked up. Because some of this burger is going to go on our pizza. 
And you know what I've noticed? I'm short. I haven't noticed that. I've known that all my life. But my stove seems to be a little higher than my other one. I noticed that, but I still love it. I wouldn't care if I have to get on a step stool and cook on this thing. Absolutely love it. Somebody said in my comments that they they took a, a guess with my hood bent that I was about five foot two. Absolutely, exactly five foot two. And uh, I'm a short one. <laughs> My granddaughter Sadie is already taller than me and she'll be, I think she'll be 13. She's already taller than me. So <laughs> that's good. I am short and sometimes it's not fun being short, but oh well. And I answered her and I said, absolutely. I am five foot two. Unfortunately, when you get on the scale, you should be, it, it, it says you should be six foot nine. <laughs> oh well, there's another oh well. But I have lost a little. I've been doing very good. Now that it's getting warmer out, I'll be able to get outside and get walking and, you know, get, get this off. I was doing real good before my mother's cancer came back. And I'm not going to lie to anybody. I'm a nervous eater. There's probably a lot of people out there that are nervous eaters. Um, I could tilt the refrigerator when I'm nervous. Never knew that. I never thought I was a nervous eater. I never had anything that traumatic in my life until my mother, you know, was diagnosed with cancer. And that's all I did was eat and cry and smoke cigarettes. I was almost, I had almost quit smoking. I had lost like 45 pounds. I was doing fantastic for my health. And that happened and it was like, I fell apart totally. And it has taken me almost a year to get myself pulled up by my bootstraps and put back together. But I'm doing it, slowly, but I'm doing it. So, it's been almost a year. It's been a very, very, very hard year for me. Um, oh boy, I don't wish that upon anybody. And I know there's many of you that lost your parents. Some unexpected, you know, some... I mean, mine wasn't unexpected. We knew my mother was terminal for four years. But you're still never ready for it, you know? That's my mama. And she was a prominent part of our lives. She was our matriarch, you know? That's a big thing. And my father, my real father, I lost him two years before my mother passed. So I lost both my parents within three years. I'm sorry, I don't care how old you are. That's going to knock you back a few steps. You know, it's like everything's gone in your world. Anything that was secure is gone in your world. And it doesn't matter whether you're young or old. It still is a lost sense of security. And it sent me for a loop. Anyway, I'm, I'm better with it now, you know. And, uh, oh yeah, when you're chubby, people make jokes and... Like somebody told me I, I could afford to skip many, 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 many meals. Well, you know, I, I have a mirror. I know what I look like. You know, that's that's fine. I don't I don't get upset. I don't get offended because if somebody says something, I just say, you know what? Perfectly fine because right now I'd outlast a lot of people in a famine. <laughs> so what do you do? But anyway. They're out there, but I'm doing good now. I'm getting myself put back together. I'm starting to eat a lot healthier. No, I still cook for my family all their comfort meals that they like. You know, I'm not gonna, just because I'm eating healthy, I'm not gonna, you know, change their diet. Anyway, this has got to cook some more, and I don't want to burn that. I'm gonna let that cook. I'm not going to yak your ear off anymore. I'm going to go get a drink of water. And when this is almost done, we'll be back.
Okay, our burger's done and it's off. And I've got my oven preheating to 475, okay? Now, again, you're not gonna think you're gonna be able to um, spread this very well. I'm telling you, all you gotta do is oil up your spatula a little bit. You're gonna wind up oiling up your hands and everything. Spread that around. All right. So we're gonna dump this right in our tray. And I've got a little parchment paper there. I do have it sprayed. This is a real sticky batter, or dough, whatever you wanna call it. It's like batter. Okay. Now I'm gonna put a little olive oil on top of this. Okay, and we're gonna start spreading this. And when you can get to a point where you can use your hands, you can use your hands. It's gonna spread quite thin, and that's okay. But see that how it works? You just spread it around there. So you might have a hole, just cover it up. Get it to the edges the best you can. And this is going to do perfectly. It's just a little work, that's all. Okay, now what you can do is you can grease up your hands really good grease that up some more because you're going to want them greasy and you just start spreading it see that and you get it as even as you can and it'll do perfect all right Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, so this is all ready. When the oven is ready, it's gonna go in there. I'm gonna put it on my middle shelf for eight minutes at 475. And then when it's done, out of there, we'll go ahead and put all our toppings and our cheese and all our goodies on it, and then we'll put it back in for another eight minutes. Hello, friends! <laughs> All right, we can put this in here, friends. That's ready. We'll do a timer for eight, for eight minutes. All right, now this is done, so I gotta let this cool a little bit more, I guess. I can't package it quite yet. So we'll let that cool down. And then I'll package it for the freezer. And then we'll be able to use some of that for, nice. We'll be able to use some of this for our pizza. Okay? So we'll let that sit there and cool off. I've got the last of my sausage and some mozzarella cheese, and that's good. So that's what we'll use for that. So between this little bit of sausage I got left over and the burger, our pizzas will be good. Okay, friends, I've got a good one for you. This is what happens when one thing, I don't know my stove yet. <laughs> I'm still learning it. And the other is my granddaughter came home who's staying with us and she needed some help with her schoolwork. So while my pizza was in the oven, 
I was helping her with her schoolwork. I set the timer on my oven for what I thought was eight minutes. I set it for eight hours. There's our pizza crust. Take a look. The chickens are gonna have a meal because there's nothing we can do with this. <laughs> so I'm gonna whip out another pizza crust, get it done so that I can take you <laughs> right on with this. But don't do what I just did. Let me get the next one going. That that's that's hard. You can't even you can't do anything with that. My husband says put some cheese on it. You're not gonna eat that. I'm not gonna waste my cheese on that. That you know what? I could either give it to the chickens or I could chop it up and use it for some breadcrumbs. Either way. But we gotta make a new pizza crust. You ready for it? Yep. You like it? I think I'll take it home. You wanna take this home? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> it's good. When do you think you're going home? <laughs> that shit be right. It does taste pretty home. good. I don't know. Bring me another piece, Nana. <laughs> you have a rotten chocolate. Papa wants a piece? Yeah. I'm gonna just rip them off a hunk. There. Oh well. It might not go to waste. Why am I a child? It tastes good, but you just can't make a pizza out of it. It's too dark. And even if I put cheese on it, I give it to the kids. I think when it cools down, it's gonna be like a brick. How often do I burn stuff? Once and a half. This is the only time. Mmm, <laughs> I do it. I'll tell you, I have flops. See? You can't do anything with that. But it's not burnt, burnt. It's just too dark and. I got the other one here. Chilling out. Get ready. I got two, uh, four, seven, five. All right. I set it for eight hours instead of eight minutes. Oh, well. I'm going to put the other one right on that tray. This is still a little too hot. I keep stirring it up so it cools down. And then I'll be able to package this up for the freezer. So that's life in my kitchen, friends. It happens.
right, friends, let us try this again. Much better. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sit up there just for a second because it's, you know what? I can set it right on here. I've got a, somebody said to me that I shouldn't put any food or anything on this table because it's not recommended. Well, this is a restaurant grade. This is, what is it? A 14 gauge, 18 gauge being, you know, pretty thin and you know not really recommended for stuff this stuff you could butcher you could slaughter a cow on this table so i don't worry about putting it it says i can use it for food food prep it's a food prep table all right so i just wanted to clear the air with that one um i mixed my what's left of my burger and my sausage together and what's left over i'll just put in the freezer for another pizza the chickens enjoyed their pizza. Okay, we're gonna spread this all around in here. Okay. This pizza really is good. If you don't burn it. I guess we all have a flap. And you know what? I don't hide nothing like that because I want people to know my kitchen is real life. And yes, that happens now and then. I've done it more than once. Not necessarily with pizza crust. I've done it with bread. You know, I've done it with a pie. I've done it with a whole pan of food before. And it's like, you know, you just, life happens and I get preoccupied. Okay, so I can take this pan. This pan is quite cold. You can put anything you want on this pizza, okay? Just so you know, you can put pepperoni, mushrooms, anything, veggies, whatever you want. This one I'm making just like the school pizzas used to with the burger. They probably didn't put as much burger on it, but you know. This is going to be a meal at some point in time. And I'm going to have a little bit left. That's okay. We'll get it all over. Coated real good. All right. The rest can go in a little container. And uh, I'll add it to the next bunch. And then all I'm going to put on top of this is mozzarella cheese. And that's a good old lunch lady pizza. This is wonderful to feed a group of kids. And they're perfect for the freezer. So, you know, you don't have to... Usually when I make these, I don't pre-bake them. I just put them in there froze. Or I just freeze them, uh, you know, unbaked. So that I can just put them in the oven from frozen. And let them go. And we're just going to put the last little bit of this cheese on here. Because... There really isn't much on there. Spread that around. Get it to all the edges. Okay, beautiful. Take a look. That's still a little too hot. But it is pretty. It's going to go back in for another eight to 10 minutes. And then you'll see how nice that turns out. Okay, friends. Fresh out of the oven, there is our pizza. Is that beautiful? It's gonna sit here and cool. This pizza, we're not gonna eat. This one, I'm just gonna cut in quarters I'm gonna freeze it and then I'm gonna package them single. That way they're just enough for John and I to have for a piece of, for a piece of pizza for dinner with a salad, you know, or for lunch with a salad. Um, perfect. And I will also make sure I put this recipe in the description box. And remember, you can put any toppings you want on it. 
and they're wonderful, quick and easy. Well, okay, friends, we did it. Our pizza is beautiful, turned out wonderful. And I'll show you. Isn't that wonderful looking? On a beautiful bed of rice. And it's beef fried rice, I did. So pork chop, smothered pork chop on rice. Everything is done. This can be frozen. All I'm gonna do with this, because we're not gonna eat this, I'm gonna cut it in quarters and I'm just gonna let it freeze overnight. Tomorrow, I will wrap it. I'll put it back in the freezer and it'll be all set for a freezer meal. The pork chops, there won't be anything left of them. I made just enough extra for us to have a pork chop for lunch tomorrow. So there you have it, friends. You hung out with me in the kitchen. You've seen my flops and you've seen my successes. You've seen real life in the kitchen. You all have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I'll see you in the next video.